Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the privilege you give us to be in your house, to be with your people, to be with our family here. Lord, we thank you for the privilege to broadcast your service. Pray for those who are joining online, uh, Lord, that you'd strengthen their hearts, encourage them in the middle of this week. God, that as we gather together just to sing about you and to uh, take a moment from our busy days, Lord, just uh, collectively and to worship you, God, I pray you turn our hearts. Lord, that we'd fall in love more and more with you each day of our lives. God, I pray you take the burdens uh, that are in our, on our minds and distractions maybe in our hands. And Lord, that you'd remove those so you'd be able to speak to each of us. God, I pray if there's any troubled hearts listening this evening, God, that you'd help us to turn our eyes to the one who cares and the one who can solve. Lord, I pray you take this hour. Strengthen each of us as we seek to live a life that's pleasing to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. You may be seated. After this next song, we'll have our tithes and offerings. All right, we're going to page 160. 160. My Jesus, I love thee. The first, the second, the fourth.
Gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, just uh, praise you and thank you for this evening, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for a little bit of rain we've had. And uh, thank you, Lord, for a cool, warm, or cool spot to come in out of the weather, Lord. And just uh, open our hearts and our minds to the word, Lord. Help us, Lord, to take the word and apply it, Lord. Lord, I just ask you to bless this offering. We do these things in your honor, your glory, Lord. These things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. 317. We're going to stretch our legs one more time. We'll stand. 317. The way of the cross, please come. Anybody have our memory verse for this month? Anybody have that? Yes, Miss Julie. She was quick to get her hands up. Yes. Perfect. Good job. Good job. Let me see here. Michaela, you come on up and I know Mr. Dale's not here. You come on up and get her candy bar. Let's have everybody else. Let's read it. It's in your bulletin there. John chapter 8, verse 36. If you don't have a bulletin there, uh, you look it up in your, the Bible. But we're going to quote this together as we endeavor as a church to memorize this verse this month. John 8, 36. The Son, therefore, shall make you free... Ye shall be free indeed. John 8, 36. In your bulletin, uh, not this coming Sunday, but the following Sunday on July 16th, we're going to have a carry-in lunch and an afternoon service. The goal in that is just to have a family time here at the church. We're going to broadcast and have our morning service as normal, Sunday school morning service, and then we're all going to head over to the youth building, uh, share a lunch together. The church will provide... The main course, if our church people would provide a side dish and a dessert, that would be helpful. And then maybe get a church game of something going on, carpet ball or something, so bring a lawn chair. Uh, if it's too hot or rainy or something, maybe we can do something in the gym. Uh, but we'd love to have you come plan for that. And then there will be no evening service that night, uh, so just a 2 o'clock service. And Brother Rudolph's going to come over and preach for that. So excited to have him be here for that. So that'll be the 16th. If you get that on your calendar and plan for that, that'd be a help. Also, a note from my wife for the Ladies' Sunday School. 
this Sunday. Uh, they're going to be taking the Lady Sunday School up to Roselawn and uh, spending that hour uh, with Miss Caroling, who is still recovering from her shoulder replacement surgery. They plan to start there about 9.30, so I think my wife will be leaving from here with the church van if you'd like to come here and just ride over with her, or if you want to just meet there at 9.30, and then obviously be back here for the 10.30 service. Um, some people who maybe are just find themselves here will just have one class in the auditorium that I'll teach if couples who want to stay together or don't want to travel, that'll be fine, or just get confused with what it is. But the ladies will be meeting over at Roselawn starting at 9.30 and uh, having Sunday school with Miss Caroline. So I know that'll be an encouragement to her. Well, if you can, I want you to be a part of that because I know that will be a help to her. Take your Bible, please. If you would, turn to Psalm chapter 91. Psalm chapter 91. You know, all of us have something that we run to. Something that's a comfort for us. Uh, growing up in Minnesota, there was always about eight months out of the year, it seemed like. Uh, there was cooped up in your house because there was too cold and there was snow everywhere. And there was things called comfort food. And I know that's not just a Minnesota thing. That's all of us things. Some people have that year-round. They have something that they run to. That's their comfort food. When, when something goes amiss, they, they have a restaurant that they go to, or they have a dessert that they get. They have some candy bar that they run to, or maybe it's some, some drink that they have. That's their comfort that they run to. And when everything else falls apart, they've got that. Some people, it's not food. Uh, for some people, it's a pleasure. It's something that they do, something they enjoy. And so when everything goes amiss, when everything goes wrong, they run to a certain thing that they just enjoy and get their mind off of everything. That is their comfort. Some people like quietness. Just get away from everybody, right? I don't want to talk to anybody. Shut my phone off. I'm just going to disappear, and no one's going to be able to find me. We're going to play a game of hide-and-seek, and I'm just going to find my little space. They just want to be completely alone. Other people, <laughs> they just want to be around people. They'll just go where everybody is and they'll be, that's their comfort. They'll just hide in a crowd and let the crowd, excuse me, let the crowd do everything. And they just run to that and that becomes their comfort. In all of those comforts and all of those secret places that people run to, I want to ask you this. What does your secret place offer you? The thing you run to, the thing that you use to pull you away from everything else, what does it offer you? Maybe as a kid, maybe it was a video game even. What does it offer? There in Psalm chapter 91, I'm going to read this entire psalm and I ask you to follow along with me. The Bible says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in Him will I trust. Surely, he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and, other, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked, because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling, for he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways." They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder, the young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under feet, because he has set his 
because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high, because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. This is a psalm, obviously the psalmist is writing, uh, and he begins talking about, he says, he that dwelleth. That little word dwell, if we could take the idea, means to reside. Where does one reside? We all have maybe a comfort thing that we run to, but the psalmist talks about this is where we reside. You ever find yourself maybe in difficult times running to that comfort, running to that secret place more and more and more? I find myself there. Sometimes when it seems like it, it, the worse it gets, the more we go there. And uh, if your comfort thing is food, that's not a good thing. Actually, really most of our comfort places really have, to be honest, very little to offer. They pull us away from the difficulty situation we're in, but they don't solve it. They, they may settle our mind down and our emotions down and let us, let us breathe again. They may take away the pressure that we feel on our chest. They may take away the weight that we feel on our shoulders. They may give us a clear mind, but, but they really do nothing. But they don't really offer us anything. The, the psalmist here said, He that dwelleth in the secret place. A dwelling, our house, is some place that we return to every night. We go there and we find a, some safety in it. We find a, 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 this is where I dwell. This is where it is. This is my home. I don't know about you, but it's important for all of us to have a place that we call ours, a place where we go. I, 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 going back to my mind to the days I was in Minnesota and so many homeless people that we were ministering to and you ask them where they live or where they reside or where they, uh, um, and it's just, they have nothing. Josh, I was, I was in the church, we took in donated vehicles and someone had came and given us a box truck. And it had broken down up by the farmer's market. And Miss Annette, I didn't know how I was going to tow a box truck. But that was the easy part. I got up there, and there was three homeless people living in the box truck. And Miss Anna, I said to them, I said, I, I need you guys to collect your things, and I need you to get all of this, all of whatever you want out of here, because I'm going to be taking this box truck. And believe it or not, Zach, they looked at me in the straight face and said, we know our rights. You can, this is where we live. You can't take this. And I said, I've got the title right here. You can't evict us from this. You have to give us 30 days. You can't evict us from our house. We have a dwelling place, right? Now, obviously I had to work with them and I didn't have to call the cops and they got their stuff and left, but they weren't very happy with me that I evicted them from their box truck, from my box truck, I could say. But we run to our dwelling because there's safety there. You ever been on vacation and you thought, boy, if I just can't wait till I get home to my bed. I can't wait till I get home to my house where I know all, everything. I know the sounds. I know the, the lights. I know, I know where the bathroom is. I don't get up and fumble around in the middle of the night. I, I can't wait. That's mine. That's my dwelling. And the psalmist says, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High. The most powerful secret place you have is not a place, but it's a person. He that dwelleth makes his residence there. This is the place where I sit down. The psalmist says, he that dwelleth in the secret place. It may be a place where nobody else knows. It's the place where it's just you and God. It's the place where there's the, the, all of everything else is left out because it's just you and God. And the Bible says, the psalmist says, he that dwelleth there, he returns 
constantly. That's his place of safety. That's his place of comfort. That's his secret place where he says, when there's somebody in place, I've got to get away. I go to him. Now, what does he offer? Food, a moment on the lips, a lifetime. Well, you know how that statement goes. Running away, you still have to deal with people. Running to people, you still have to go home to be by yourself. Running to a TV show or a, a, a favorite restaurant or meal, running to anything. What does it offer? Let's see what the psalmist says. This is what the secret place of the Most High, this is what he offers. First of all, he says, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. First of all, our place of residing. You ever thought of shadows? Remember as a kid, or maybe even now, shadows are almost a scary thing. You know something is out there and you can see the shadow moving. You see it moving on your wall. And you're, you can create an imagination runs wild. And you, you create all of this of what it is. And it might be something that's very small. But it casts this huge shadow. Not too long ago we were sitting in our living room at nighttime, And my daughter has a bunny. And we were, we were just having fun in our living room. We had turned the lights off. And we were doing shadow puppets on the wall. And we were, you know flying and making the bird fly around and I'll tell you what that rabbit wasn't enjoying it it kept stomping its foot and letting us know and we we were wondering what in the world why is this so and then we realized it saw the shadow and when it saw the shadow of a bird flying it was looking for, the, the rabbit was looking for a place to go. It was looking for a place to get away. It was looking for a dwelling place to go. The shadow. God says, this is it. If you abide underneath the shadow, the shadow is overshadowing you, is covering over you. This is the place of residing. You know, there's truly no place on earth you can go where the world can't reach you. Can I use my wife for an illustration? We have, obviously, have kids in our household. Miss Jamie, maybe you've realized this in your life. When mom just wants to get away, that's the moment your kids need you. Mommy, 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 what do you need? I'm just trying to get away. Mommy. You think you can run away. In our dwelling place, in our house, we think, finally, I'm at home, I'm at safe. But you know what? Any storm could come. Any thief could come in. That's not a safe dwelling place. The only safe dwelling place, the only secret place, is the place where God is. The place of residing. To the true believer... A true believer, Craig, says, my home is with God. I can be in the midst of everything else, but the place that I reside is with God. I'm in Him. I'm hidden Him. And when I'm there with Him, I can just be myself. Why do people like to get home? Because they feel like they can just let them... Be themselves. Sometimes we put on a little bit of a personification or a persona when we're out in public. When we're at work, we try to hold it together. Maybe we're going through a difficult time and when we're out in public, we hold it together. When we get home, we just let it all out. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High abides under the shadow of the Almighty. He that, true, a true believer, he spends time with God and he can say, God, 
This is who I am. You know everything. The reality is, gentlemen, from this last week's Sunday school, our inward man must match our outward man. God desires truth in the inward parts. And to a true believer who dwells with God, when his inward man and his outward man, when he's just himself, that's when he can worship God. In spirit and in truth. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High. I, I want to move on. He goes on, he says, not only is there a place of residing, there's a proclamation to the resting. He gives a personal illustration. He says, he says, I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in Him will I trust. He says, this is my personal testimony. This is my personal expression, <coughs> experience. He's a refuge. A refuge, as Webster defines it, is a shelter or protection from danger or distress. That which shelters or protects from danger distress or calamity, a stronghold which protects by its strength, or a sanctuary which secures safety by its sacredness, any place inaccessible to an enemy. This is my refuge. He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High says, when things go wrong, I run to God. To a true believer, <coughs> excuse me, this should be our comfort. Do we go to Him? Or do we go to something else? What does our secret place offer? He says, I will, this is my refuge, he says, and my fortress. Webster says this, it's any fortified place, a fort, a castle, a stronghold, a place of defense or security. The psalmist says, this is my personal experience. This is why I run to God. I want you to understand it. This is my personal experience. I wonder if I was to ask you what your place of safety is, what would you truly tell me? I hope it would be God. And if it is, what would testimony would you give? When you run to God, when everything else is in shambles and you run to God, what happens? The psalmist says, I find him to be my refuge, my shelter. I find him to be my fortress. He's a stronghold. If Jehovah be our God, our refuge and our fortress, what can we truly desire which we may not be sure to find in Him? There's a world that I know nothing of. A world of drugs and alcohol. And I'm thankful that I was never a part of that. I'm not better than anybody. God didn't save me out of that. He saved me from that. And for that, I'm, I'm grateful for it. But there's people who run to things. Derek and I had an opportunity to go experience tragedies uh, in, the, in being exposed to it a little bit more. And to realize those people, Derek, have something that they oftentimes run to that takes their mind away from things, that takes their mind off of the situation they're in. The psalmist says, you know, the best secret place I found is the person of Jesus Christ. Not only does he give a personal explanation or expressions, he gives a proclaimed message. He says in verse 3, Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisy, from noisy some pestilence. He says, when somebody declares this to be their dwelling place, when somebody says, God is my refuge, God is my fortress, when they go there, the, the psalmist says, listen, there's a snare that you get delivered from you don't even know of. A snare it, it is, creates imminent danger. You think of, uh, of some show you're watching and somebody walks into a snare, into a trap, and their, their legs all of a sudden get tied into a rope and they're hanging upside down in a matter of a split second. 
and they've walked into somebody's snare, or they've walked into a pit, they've fallen down, and they're in some imminent danger. They weren't prepared for it. They didn't know it was coming. It was just all of a sudden, before they knew it, they're caught up in a net, and they're hanging 10 feet off the ground. The psalmist says, listen, God knows the steps you take, and He'll deliver you from the snare. He'll deliver you from the things that are unseen, from the things you're not, you don't know what's going to come, the things you don't know the outcome of. This is what this secret place offers. Do you know that to be true? You say, God is my refuge. I'm one of a great. Dig deeper and find your security in Him. Let me read on. He says, and from the noisy some pestilence, You know, there's certain sounds that literally make people freeze. There's certain noises, maybe at certain times, that make the hair on the back of your neck stand up straight. There's certain things that you hear, and immediately your mind runs to the worst. There are certain noises that maybe they don't scare us. They just drive us to insanity. I won't ask this here, but how many people sleep with white noise? They have a fan running or they have a waterfall in their room or they have some white noise that they have going on because they want to block out all the noise of something else. It was funny because... Uh, my wife and I snuck away for our anniversary, and we were staying uh, at a hotel place not too far from here. And uh, I commented, I commented to my wife, I'm like, I'm not, we're not used to hearing traffic. We're not used to hearing cars go by. We're not used to hearing all of the, the sounds and the noise, and the air conditioner was right there. It was a window unit, and it was running, and it would cut off and run again. And I'm like, I, it's, it, 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 I, the, I don't like the noise. I don't know if I'm going to be able to sleep. But some people sleep with white noise. They try to block out the noise of going on. You know what I've also learned? Derek would probably know this. They can use noise as a, as a cannon, as a weapon to move people and to get people to do something. And the Bible says, the psalmist says, listen, God, if, when he's your fortress, when he's your refuge, when he's your secret place, when he's your dwelling place, he, he hides you from all of that noise that drives you to things. Drives you to insanity or drives you away. All the, not, just, not just the things you don't know about, the snare, but the noisy some pestilence. Everything can just be quiet and to settle down when He is your dwelling place. Let's move on. He says, He shall cover thee with His feathers, and under His wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and thy buckler. You ever picked up a feather and reached to the person in front of you and just gently brush their neck? Or maybe you just went over their ear with it and it's just just a gentle... Jorn's laughing. Has, has your, your dad ever done that to you? I'm sure he has sometime. No? It's just a gentle, just an annoyance. But you know what it is? It's just a gentle touch. The Bible says that he'll cover you with his feathers. Just a gentle, slight brushing of your skin to say, I'm here, child. I'm not weighing a burden on you. I'm not laying my arm on you. I'm not putting my hand on your shoulder and making you bear the weight. I'm just letting you know, Miriam, I'm right here. As a mother hen guards and protects and brings her brood underneath her wings and brings them in closer and uses her feathers to cover them, God says, that's exactly what I do. I will brood you. I will bring you in and I will cover you with the feathers that I have. This is what the, this secret place has to offer. 
Not only that, he says, his truth shall be thy shield and thy buckler. I looked this up. A buckler is a kind of shield. It's a piece of defensive armor, anciently used in war. It was composed of wooden or wicker woven together. It was covered with skin or leather. It was fortified with plates of brass or other metal. And it was usually worn on the left arm because most people were right-armed, were, 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 used their right arm. In the middle was, a, was what they called an umbo, if I'm pronouncing that right. And it was useful for causing stones and darts to glance off. It was about four feet long, what they assume, so you could almost hide your entire body behind it. And the Bible says, listen, this secret place is me and I will be your buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid of the terror by night, nor the arrows that flyeth by day. You know what, Brent? When God is our secret place, it doesn't make a difference what time of day or night we have a problem. We can run to Him. It doesn't make a difference how great or how small, how damaging or just discouraging it might be. This is what this secret place offers. I can lock all my doors at night and I can prepare myself the best I can to be as safe as I can. And I should do that. But my safety comes from God. He that dwelleth in the secret place. I've got to move on. Let me move quickly. Let me jump to verse 9 and my third point here. The protection of the resident. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation. If you're in the habit of marking things in your Bible, I want you to circle that little word habitation in verse number 9. And also the word dwelling in verse number 1. And if you can, connect those two. Because a habitation is simply this. This is my settled dwelling. This isn't just the place that I dwell. This is the place I am going to stay. Probably you guys understand this more than I do in, in our lives. My family, has God has moved us several different places, several different states. And we have a dwelling. The church provides us a parsonage to live in. That is our dwelling. That is where we go every night. That's where our family lives. But the person here who finds and tries God and proves Him, he says he moves it beyond the fact that this is where I reside to this is where I'm settling down and this is where I'm going to remain. This is my habitation. This is my settled dwelling. I'm not leaving from here. I say that because I know there's many families in our church that are living in the home that their grandparents lived in or their grandparents were born in and they pass it down. This becomes a settled, this is where we're going to remain. And the Bible talks about, listen, this is what God has to become to us. Not just a, not just a, a secret place that we want to. Not just something that, that we, we run off to when things go hard and things get difficult. But this is, this is where I'm, I'm settled. This is where I'm always going to go. And we get down here in verse number, I'm going to jump to the end, verse 14. And this is where God speaks. And he gives us three things that he's talking about the person who makes his dwelling in the secret place of God. Verse number 14, because he hath set his love upon me. First thing. God says, this is, this is what I'm observing. As the shadow, as the God who's overshadowing and is watching and protecting and being the refuge and the buckler, he says, I noticed something about this person. He doesn't just run to me when he wants something. He doesn't just run to me when things get tough, difficult. He runs to me. Why? Because he loves me. Why do we love God? Simply because He first loved us. How could I turn from a God, Greg, who loves me so much to send His Son for me? But the longer I love Him, the more love I have for Him. 
The songwriter said, The longer I serve him, the sweeter he grows. The more that I love him, more love he bestows. Each day is like heaven, my heart overflows. The longer I serve him, the sweeter he grows. God says, I, I'm going to speak here. He says, because thou hast set thy love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I'm going to protect him. He's already sent his angels. We didn't talk about that. But he sends his angels to tenderly and with their hands in verse 12 to make sure and protect you and to keep you from all this. This is the protection that he gives for those residents. But God himself says, I will deliver him. I will set him on high because, number two, he hath known my name. Do you know that God is known by his name? To many, he's just a swear word. They'll use his name, but they use it in vain. If I was to ask you to list off some names of God, not maybe it was three or four years ago, the kids had a challenge to come up with as many names of God. I don't know if my son still has that, but he wrote out, Jonathan, I don't know, how many names did you come up with? Did you number them? He had pages and pages and pages. God, do we know him by his name? What names do we know of God? God says specifically, He hath known my name. We know He's the God who provides, the God who protects, the God who supplies. We know He's Jehovah. We know He's the all powerful. We know He's the all caring. We know God is love. All of these. But God says he knows my name. You know, isn't there something special about walking into a place and somebody says, hello, and they call you by your name? You know, I've made a habit recently. I've been trying to. Most companies, most people who work there have a name tag. Do you ever call that person by their name? It's an amazing thing because sometimes they'll, do I know you? And you think, no, you, you just have your name on a name tag that you've got on your lapel. And I just said, thank you, Adam. And they look at me like, do I know you? Why? Because somebody takes the time to call them by their name. And God says, do you call me by my name or are you just... Is it just a generic God? He goes on, third thing. He says, he shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. Why? Because he talks to me. I notice something about this person. Their love is, is upon me. They know my name and they talk to me. I want you to take your Bibles, please, and turn to the book of John. I'm sorry, Matthew. Matthew. Not John. Matthew. Matthew chapter 6. Keep your place in Psalm. We're going to come back there. Matthew chapter 6. The Bible says, Take heed that you do not your alms before men to be seen of them. Otherwise ye have no reward of your Father which is in heaven. Therefore, when thou dost thine alms, do not sound a trumpet before thee, as the hypocrites do in the synagogue and in the streets, that they may glory, have glory of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But when thou doest alms, let not thy left hand know what thy right hand doeth that thine alms may be in secret. And the Father which seeth in secret himself shall reward thee openly. And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are. For they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets, that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut the door, pray to the Father which is in secret, and thy Father which seeth in secret 
shall reward thee openly. But when ye pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Be ye not therefore like unto them, for your Father knoweth what things ye have need of before ye ask him. Twice here, he says, in referring to alms and in prayers, he says, the Father sees in secret. I want to ask you it again. What does your secret place offer? I would challenge you not just to dwell. As Psalm start, this psalm starts out, he that dwelleth in the secret place, but to make it our habitation. There's no place you can run to that will offer you what God has. And if God is your dwelling place, then grow deeper and sweeter with Him. Because He offers so much more grace than what you and I need. When someone can't sleep, do they run to God? When someone has troubles that fall upon them and they're overwhelmed, do they run to God? When somebody has just time to kill, do we run to God? When everything is in, in a turmoil in our life, where is our secret place? The victorious Christian life becomes more and more rewarding the longer we live in Him. I want you to take your hymnals. Let's turn to 423. Probably a song that we don't sing that often, but I think we know it, 423. song written by Ron Hamilton and he says before I start each day there is a special place I love to go alone and seek my Savior's face I find wisdom in his word to instruct me in his will and I hear his gentle voice say my child be still my quiet time alone gives me power to obey. My quiet time alone with God each day. I talk to Him in prayer. Every day He meets me there. My quiet time alone with God. Verse 2. He's with me all the time, wherever I may go. Each moment of the day, He's always there, I know. But I need that special time when I bow before His throne just to read His Word and talk with my Lord. My quiet time alone gives me power to obey. My quiet time alone with God each day. I talk with Him in prayer. Every day He meets me there. My quiet time alone with God. He that dwells. in the secret place. What's the refuge? What's the comfort? May God become our dwelling. And not just our dwelling. May God become our settled dwelling, our habitation. Dear Heavenly Father, we, I know I didn't do justice to this psalm this truth of who you are and how you provide for us. God, there's people in this room who could give far greater testimony than maybe even what's written here about the secret place of dwelling with God. But we have your word and your promises. And God, would you strengthen each one of us, every person listening to my voice, whether here in the auditorium or those online, to make you our dwelling, 
gay our habitation. There's no food. There's no place of comfort. There's no safety net like you. God, may you be our dwelling. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you very much for listening here. Kate, would you turn off the live stream for me? I'd appreciate that. If you join us online, we'd like to thank you for joining us. I'm looking forward to seeing you again this Sunday morning at 1030. And uh, make sure you're here. Thank you very much. If you're here in the auditorium, if you take out from your bulletin that golden sheet of paper for our prayer request this week. And we'll get in. Thank you for joining us today on our live stream service. We trust that this service was a blessing and an encouragement to you. If you are looking for a church home, please prayerfully consider Hartford Independent Baptist Church. If you ask Christ to become your Savior in response to this service, we would love to send you some material to help you in your faith. Or if you would like to receive some discipleship material, please write and let us know how we can get that to you. Also, we'd love to have you visit our webpage, HartfordIndependentBaptist.com. There you will be able to donate and to keep up to date on the life and ministry of Hartford Independent Baptist Church. Thank you very much, and until we meet again, may the Lord bless